Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very promptly and on-time episode of First Ring Daily. I'm Brad. Uh, he's Darth Maul or something like that. I'm sitting in the dark over there, but we'll get that to that in a second. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Smart Deploy. They specialize in computer imaging so that your IT team doesn't have to. Check them out at smartdeploy.com, the computer IT specialist for deployments, all that good stuff. Uh, what is going on over there, Paul? I have no idea. I don't know. Nothing has changed. I don't know. <laughs> you know, this is the uh, this is the double edged sword that is personal technology. You know, nothing ever works, and it's always kind of random. I don't know. Yes, yeah, so you're also um, and you're a little dark, Paul. And I, I usually crack a joke about that's just a reflection of your soul, but you're very much on the exterior of the body this this time. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm in the sunroom today because my office is being painted. So it looks like a, the set of Dexter in there, as somebody pointed out on Twitter. So it's a little bright because, unfortunately, behind me is all these doors and windows and things. And yeah. I can't, uh, I can't close the shades because there are no <laughs> shades. I will tell you, it does look like it's warm outside, but I suspect that it is not. Oh, no, it's like 25 degrees out. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> I knew that because we had that weather yesterday. And unfortunately, you don't have much good news on the horizon, I think, for this weekend. So, yeah, pretty much I'm just looking forward to April now. Mm. Um, so, other things that are going on and, uh, you know, diving into the show here, folks. Uh, Paul, I think you've seen this, but EA, mm -hmm. the Electronic Arts, the masters of buying properties and then killing them slowly over time. <laughs> yep. Uh, <clears throat> They are buying Respawn, and if Respawn doesn't ring a bell, they're actually they're going to be acquiring Titanfall, right? Which right. is not good news, I don't think, for anybody. Well, Unless you were why do you say that? Just because uh, because EA is this awful behemoth that everybody hates for good mm -hmm. reason. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I don't know. I guess if you uh, reach a certain size in the game market, you, you're you become a acquisition target of EA, <laughs> pretty much, or Activision. Yeah. Um, one of the things I think that's going to end Titanfall here is I believe Titanfall 2, best of my understanding, there wasn't really microtransactions, and I think they gave away some DLC for free. Uh, Paul, is EA known for doing either one of those? <laughs> EA is known for creating its own online service, even though all of the platforms it plays on have, already have their own services. So, uh, no, right. they, they are, if they are good at anything, it is monetizing. Yep. And so I suspect that if you want a new Titan in Titanfall 3, you mm -hmm. will get one for a certain amount of third-party currency that you will have to buy, just like the yeah. coal miners back in the early 1900s. Also, you'll probably get it early if you join EA Access, which is available now for a lifetime fee of just $1,000. <laughs> and for $20,000, they'll let you come help make the game, but not pay you. Yeah, exactly right. You can get an actual mech. <laughs> uh, yeah. Speaking of games, though, one of the things I'm actually looking forward to this, even though I don't have an Xbox One X yet, uh, Destiny 2, the ever popular game that has a very bad ending, at least from the mm -hmm. first iteration of the $60 that you paid, uh, it's going to be bumped up to 4K on both the PlayStation and the Xbox. But as we all know, the Xbox One X has a, uh, this sounds kind of weird, a better 4K. It's not checkerboarding. We <laughs> believe yep. it's going to be native. And that's coming in December. Yeah, yeah. Somebody had uh, I, I was sort of privy to that happening on the Xbox at least. Um, somebody actually questioned why I had a Destiny shot in my Xbox One first impressions article, and it was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> you know <laughs> I thought it looked nice. Yeah, it's a pretty game. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just mm -hmm. kind of hoping that they, you know. People who have played Destiny will understand this. I just hope that the first expansion pack fixes everything wrong that's with Destiny. Um, do, you, do you have um, any of the Halo games available to you on Xbox One? Uh, I have a couple of them. I believe I bought Halo 5. That one, I should be able to get that. Why? Because uh, I've gone back and looked at them again because, you know, they're being enhanced, mm -hmm. right, for Xbox One mm -hmm. X. And I got to say, you know... It, Especially Halo Three, which has really surprised me. Um, it's it's an interesting reminder of why the guys that made this these games are so great, you know. And and I see you see elements of Halo in the Destiny games, 
mm-hmm. for sure. But when you go back, you go back, if you could go back and just look at the beginning sequence of like Halo three or even the opening sequence of Halo five too, by the way, um, it's kind of a nice reminder, like of how awesome this stuff can be. Um, yeah. It's interesting. No, I, I don't ag- disagree, especially playing the new call of duty. Uh, just kind of yeah. like going back to basics, just like uh, taking up all the crap that surrounded just basically FPS shooters and that they piled on over the past 10 years. And when you strip all that away, like going back to Halo yep. 3 and those types of games, you get back to just what was fun. Um, yep. Grab the, the gun and go. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I will say I feel like uh, what it must have been like to be Michael Jordan coming back to the NBA and playing for the Wizards. It's like I used to be really good at this <laughs> game. What happened? Um, cause I, I think like my call of duty world war two, my stats like a week later have got to be the worst I've ever compiled like for multiplayer yeah. KD ratio, however you want to look at it. It's, it's just horrific. Um, but it's, it's awesome. It's just, it's, I'm, I don't know, slow. I don't know. I just spent a lot of time running around a corner getting shot in the face. <laughs> Just another day that ends in Y for Paul yeah, Thoreau. Yeah, exactly. It's, um, but we didn't talk about this too much when this was announced, but I'm, now that I've got the build on a new machine, uh, you mm-hmm. can now basically, the Microsoft Store being rebranded from the Windows Store to Microsoft Store, you can now buy Surface hardware through it, finally. Yeah, sort of. Did you, so have you looked at this yet? A little bit. I mean, enough that I pulled it up, but not. I didn't actually try to buy anything. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I know. <laughs> um, in my experience, because you you can kind of see this in the um, like the shipping builds of Windows 10, right? Like you don't actually need like an insider build. Mm-hmm. Although I'm looking at it now, now I don't see it. But I went in here yesterday, and it's like, oh, new Surface devices, and you click on it, and then it goes to the web, <laughs> you know. Oh, no. um, so I, I assume the idea here is that they want to have it right in the store. And I think, honestly, what they need to do is start adding some stuff to the top. Like, they should have a Surface link up there, right? You know, like mm-hmm. apps, games, Surface, you know, yep. smart. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, the only thing I could see potentially with that is that if you're Lenovo, you probably don't want that Surface link in the Windows store. Yeah, that's, that is a good point. Go right over there. Multitasking. Yeah. You <laughs> just kind of like got quiet. It's like, you know, if we ever need to do a witness protection program, they can just sit right where you are. Because like <laughs> is it that face bad? is mostly blacked out. It's, right. uh, Sorry. No, we can just we, we need to get some voice changing. Maybe we can make you like a little care bear over there on that side. I got a good outfit if you want to be a care bear, by the way. Yeah, I saw that. Um I would be more likely to burn that in a fire than I would be to wear it, but I but I appreciate it. Well, uh, my as my daughter would say, your belly badge is sad because you don't like. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can tell you this that's though. Not so, that's it's not the last we've seen of that thing. This is a, I was just thinking of words that would never come out of either of my child's mouths. <laughs> uh, and then, real quick, Paul. So you started to hit on the the Call of Duty. How is it? How's the mul- how are you doing in the multiplayer? Because I am doing terrible, terrible, yeah, it's terrible. I like that, that's my point. I mean, I, I don't I don't recall ever doing this poorly. I mean, usually in the beginning it's kind of tough because you don't know the maps and you know the weapons may be unfamiliar or whatever. It takes a little while to kind of ramp up. For some reason, there's always people there who know exactly what they're doing. Um, that has not been the case for me though. Like it's just been terrible. Like I've never really. I mean, I've had a couple of decent matches for sure, but I mean, I. I absolutely have a negative kill death ratio right now. Like, I don't know what's going on. I just run around and get shot. I think I'm basically just waiting, like trying to level up so I can get better weapons at this point. Um, I will tell you that the game, I think it's, I want to say it's Griffin ball or something like that. It's, Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of fun. If you can get it, I play with about four or five different people. uh, And when we can get a whole squad running, it's, it's a lot of fun. It can be really frustrating if you're in a laggy room, which, by the way, we should have dedicated P2P servers because you guys made a whole bunch of money on this game. Don't tell me you can't afford it. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, real quick here, Mr. Putt. Well, there we go. Uh, yeah. Do you work in IT? There's probably a pretty good chance you do, especially if you're watching this show. 
Uh, are you deploying new images? Are you upgrading to Windows 10? Or are you refixing a machine that maybe your coworker dropped in an elevator uh, while going up to a conference on another floor, which I've actually done that before. So that's not a personal story, just kidding, it is. Uh, but if you are deploying images to new machines, Smart Deploy can help you out. They've got these awesome driver packages. It's so awesome, actually, it's been patented. And they could take the pain out of deploying new images to machines. Seriously, like a lot of people say that this is the worst part of their IT job, especially the IT pros. And Smart Deploy makes it a lot better. And everything is built in with simple to use wizards. Just drag and click and, and you're done. It takes the pain and the time out of it, giving you more time to do what you need to do today. Ah, uh, wouldn't that be nice? Go check them out at smartdeploy.com slash throt for a free offer. And those licenses last forever and they'll give you one year of support and they'll let you just play with it. It's seriously worth it. Go try it out, get your time back, deploy those images and have a better day. That's smart deploy, guys. I need to have a better day. You do. You're you're, you're struggling over there today, man. I, I, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. It's been a tough morning. Yeah. Well, tell us about your tough morning with the Pixel Book. <laughs> um, I, I am surprised to report that I actually like this thing quite a bit. And I want to be clear about this. I did not expect that. <laughs> and yeah. um, I, it's interesting. Um, the, the comments on the article are mostly actually very positive, which has been kind of a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. Um, I think people are coming around to the notion that this stuff is real. You know, they, I mean, yeah. uh, for people in the Windows space, especially, I think Chrome OS and even Chrome OS with Android is a little bit of a blocker. You know, like people just have an attitude about it. Like, why would I want to spend a thousand dollars on a web browser? Mm -hmm. um, and there's some of that, of course. There's always going to be some of that. Um, this is a nice machine. I mean, you know, this is priced at about the same level as the Surface Pro or the Surface Laptop. Even mm -hmm. it's a convertible PC, so it can work like a tablet. It can work, you know, in tent mode. It can sit, you know, sit up straight and all that stuff. It come doesn't come with, but you can get a pen for ninety nine dollars, which I did not get. Um, and it runs Android apps, right? And this is what kind of opens things up in a really interesting way because I've been kind of waiting for this. I mean, I would say for a year and a half ish. I mean, I think they announced it at Google I O twenty sixteen, so about a year and a half ago. And um, this is the first product uh, to sh Chrome uh, Chromebook product to ship with uh, Android support in non-beta form. And it mm -hmm. works well, you know, there's, there's little, um, little things, you know, as there would be, but it, it's, it's actually kind of neat. And I, I, you see the vision that Microsoft had with Windows 8 first and also with things like Windows 10 where you have this kind of mobile app store and it kind of puts this thing over the top. But of course on the Windows side, it never really came together. Um, I think what this speaks to is that kind of post PC world thing where for most people, not for everybody, for sure, but for most people, you can kind of do everything you need to do on your phone. And then there's this small percentage of time where you actually need a keyboard and stuff like that. And so this provides that kind of thing, you, you know, that puts it over the top because you can run the mobile apps, you can run the uh, the web apps, um, and you can do that side by side. And uh, you could run like the, you know, the Android phone version of Spotify in a little window that looks like a little phone thing floating there on the screen. And you can run... Microsoft Word full screen uh, behind it and be writing, you know, or next to it or whatever on top of it, whatever it is. Um, and I, this has been like the dream or the um, the theory. And, and I think this is the first time I've seen it work in reality. So I've only had it for a day. I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, yeah. I'm not switching platforms or anything like that. But it's this is viable and, and it's very interesting, and I think it serves the same role in the Android slash Chromebook space as Surface does in the PC space. It's aspirational. It's expensive. It's something most people wouldn't buy or couldn't afford. Um, but you might look at this and say, "This is awesome." I guess I'll spend four hundred bucks on this other thing instead. You know, mm -hmm. and I think it will solve the need, uh, if you will, for many many people. So this is something Microsoft needs to be worried about. This is surprisingly decent. Yeah, I that think a lot of people like are going to get hung up. Yeah. I think a lot of people are going to get hung up um, on that $1,000 price point to your to your point. I mean, that's a lot of yeah. money for when you compare it to, say, a Surface laptop or a MacBook Air or an iPad Pro. Uh, but to your point, and I, I tend to agree with this, is that the vision is there. And you can see how with a little bit of time um, and then refinement that this is actually a very viable uh, roadmap at the end of the day. 
Yeah, I mean, well, you mentioned Surface Laptop is kind of interesting. I mean, obviously, you could upgrade to Windows uh, 10 Pro for free on the Surface Laptop. But mm -hmm. if you compare Surface Laptop with Windows 10s to this, yeah. I mean, honestly, you got to kind of throw it to this. I mean, this is a much better device. Not the hardware itself, although, you know, some people may prefer it. Um, but just the whole value equation. I mean, um, when it comes to web apps, you know, Chrome is the best way for that to happen. So you got that. And then it has the best mobile apps uh, platform on there as well. So it's interesting. I, I For my particular needs, you know, there are things that I do every day on the PC that are just not kind of here. Uh, mm -hmm. Or not here in the same form. Um, and so, you know, there's always that kind of weird transition thing where you go like, well, how do I, I want to edit graphics and I want to put them on our website or I want to do whatever. I mean, you have yeah. to kind of think about that stuff. But I, I mean, I think this is, this is surprisingly, I know I keep surprisingly decent. It's a terrible way to say it. Um, I, I guess just because my expectations were so low, I'm surprised by how good it is. And it is good. Yeah. One thing, um, you just you mentioned there, and it, it's actually I don't know if we should be concerned about this in any capacity or not, but we have mm -hmm. heard nothing about Windows 10 S since what March? Like well, yeah, May, whatever. Yeah, they haven't really talked about it too much. I mean, it was updated for the fall credits update. Obviously, they were kind of quiet about that. Um, mm -hmm. In updating the book, I've noted very small differences here and there, and different things that they kind of hadn't talked about in the past, but n nothing serious. Um, right. I'm sure if you were to ask Microsoft about this today, they'd say, well, there's nothing to say. It's just Windows 10, you know. And yeah, yeah I mean, sort of. <laughs> but yeah, you don't see a lot of new PCs coming out running Windows 10s per se. Although we've seen, I guess we've seen a couple uh, in very limited capacities um, for frontline workers, whatever they're called, or first line workers, whatever. Yeah, yeah um, I guess that's true. But that's kind of an interesting thing right there. I mean, Microsoft is going after these kind of vertical and niche markets with Windows 10s. And this thing is just like it's for everybody. You know? mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's how Microsoft wants Windows 10 S to be. It's just that the App Store isn't there yet. Although, you know, let's be fair there too. I mean, the Microsoft Store, the Windows Store, whatever we're calling it today, has gotten a lot better even yeah. in the past couple of months, you know. Yeah. So we'll see. And uh, yeah. folks, it is Friday here. And on Friday, we always like to take a look back at some of the comments and other uh, shenanigans that take place on the site. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But, Paul, I don't, I believe this is true. Somebody wrote it on the site. Mm -hmm. so, so it must be true. It must be true. <laughs> but yeah. uh, his, uh, as per usual, folks, the ongoing joke on the show is that I can never pronounce usernames. And this is this trend is not changing with this person. Uh, it's I'm guessing R. Candelori would be their, their name. It says, uh, the current em emoji keyboard is U.S. only. That was oh, in the geez. latest uh, Insider build. Well, okay. Yeah. I mean, that, is that, that true that, only of the Insider build? I don't know, but does it really matter that if Microsoft shipped out an emoji keyboard that is not uh, available in other languages or regions, to me is the epitome of Microsoft just, <laughs> as he puts it, yeah. shooting themselves in the foot. It's just funny because there's no reason why another country uh, should not be able to access an emoji keyboard. Everybody loves them. Paul. <laughs> I, we will never stop hearing from anyone who lives outside the United States when something like this happens. And I get it. I mean, I can't, what are you going to do? Of course. <laughs> I just think yeah. it's, I, this is just the, the epitome of Microsoft, um, to me. But, uh, the yeah. next question actually comes from, it was actually in the forum. So I do browse the forums when I'm looking for this stuff. It's from mm -hmm. David up and he, he went through a long series of, he's trying to find a family calendar and he's been having troubles with it. And so Paul, I was curious if, if you guys do, or if your family does use a family calendar, what online service do you use and how does that work for you? So I don't, we don't use a family calendar, but we do calendar sharing through Google Calendar, uh, which kind of kind of results in the same thing. The idea is that if you think about how any calendar works, you have like check boxes next to each of the calendars you can display or not display. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, when you share your calendar, obviously you get, in my case, my wife's calendar. My wife gets my calendar. So, like, when we go to um, Ignite in September, she mm -hmm. turns off the display of my calendar because it is a dumpster fire of meetings and appointments. <laughs> and she just it just clutters up the whole view and she can't see her own stuff. Um, that was one of the benefits 
of Outlook.com Premium, right? That you had this, um, that the sharing of not just calendars, but I think other things like contacts and so forth was supposed to be very simple. I, I never took advantage of it. Um, but of course, that service isn't offered anymore either. So um, you should be able to share calendars. I mean, I, it's a little ponderous to do it on a user by user basis, but you should mm -hmm. be able to do that if that's what you want to do. Yeah. So we, my wife and I, we're a little bit. Um, not so, I mean, we're in a, integrated, obviously, uh, but not so well. <laughs> you have an integrated, integrated experience. <laughs> so we both have, each have our own calendars. And when there's something that I need to be going to, she sends me quite literally uh, a meeting invite. There you go. Or if I need to take out the trash, she will send me a meeting invite. If I got to take the kids somewhere like that's. So when I look yeah. at the, the downside to that is that I can't really see what's on my wife's calendar. But uh, as you know, Paul, being married, 99% of the things I have to go to, she's going to, or is that in some capacity? Yeah. Like, and they arrive in the form of, of town, a to-do. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Like if she's going yeah, out of yeah. town, she'll send me a meeting invite for three days that says, hey, I'm out of town type type stuff. So. Yeah, my wife uh, has separated her calendars. So she's like, a, she actually has a family calendar. And that's the one she shares with me. Because um, I don't really care when she has work calls and stuff like that during the day. But she has a calendar right. for that too. Um, so if the kids, you know, the kid, the, I mean, this is winding down for us, right? But, you know, when the kids would have like activities and, you know, needed to be mm -hmm. driven different places, blah, 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 whatever, I would see that on my calendar because I needed to know, you know, like Tuesday night Kelly has dance and so one of us has to deal with that and blah, 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 yep. whatever. So it seems like that's a, it's a decent enough way to do it, right? I mean, it's not yeah, a little bit of manual setup, but you pretty much just do it once, you know? Mm hmm Yep. Uh, other than uh, find, finding the light in your life and, and the smiles and happiness, Paul, you got anything else for today? Jeez, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm just going to retreat into my hole and get killed at Call of Duty a lot and just call it a day. I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> happened here. Yeah, how much just, longer? Just got off to a painting? bad start. How much longer What's is the painting going on? Yeah, that's what I keep asking every day. Um, <laughs> I mean, my office will be done today. I mean, there's only a couple more days. So maybe Monday, Tuesday, something like that. We got plumbing stuff to finish, same time frame. We got a backsplash in the kitchen. Nobody should care about that. But I mean, I, I, was, I literally just had this conversation with my wife this morning. I'm like, I need this to end. Like, I need this just to be done. I can't, you know, like I actually, I mean, I enjoy everyone that comes to the house. They're all great guys and everything. It's just, yeah. you know, it's disruptive. And uh, so, I mean, I'm just throwing this out there. They're probably not coming to your house for free either. They're not coming over because they like you. No, that's true. Um, I was I asked the guys if I bought you lunch a couple of days, would they knock like a thousand dollars off the price? And the answer <laughs> was uh, no. So it's uh, yeah, it's not a free service. So that's when you start ordering like ribs and steak just for yourself for lunch, and be like, you guys could have had this. You you should, the conversations we have over this are incredible because we have like a plumber doing faucets and everything here is like 1980s out of mm -hmm. date stuff, you know, and in the case of faucets and things like that, shower heads and so forth, it's all like this silver and gold stuff that was yeah. probably the height of fashion in 1982. And, um, I can't get rid of this stuff like quickly enough. Like I, I just, I hate it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? That said, I literally just said to my wife this morning, like, if you would just want to put a stop to this, we could just be done. I would be okay with that. I, I could live with the gold. I just, I just need this to stop. Yeah. When we, uh, when we moved into our house, very similar thing. I replaced all the doorknobs. Exact yeah. same thing. We oh. went from like the little, like, it almost looked like light bulbs, but they're brass and they're yep. very nice. Yes. But what I wasn't, you know, I was 24 years old at the time. And I like, I walked through mm -hmm. the house and I was like, one, two, three. There's a lot of doorknobs in here. <laughs> you yeah, you never realize that until you, until you have to replace them. <laughs> and then you realize they're yeah. like 40 bucks a pop. Yep. So I just so. Uh, just talked about doorknobs with my wife today because we one of the first things we did was replace the locks right on the front and the back door. Yep. The door that's behind me is actually being replaced on Monday um, as well as like a screen door type thing on the front. Mm -hmm. But I was standing in the kitchen. We were talking about this and I looked over at this like in the kitchen there's a um, – a door down to the cellar, which has a, a deadbolt on it for some reason, which we've taken removed yeah. and a doorknob, obviously. And then there's a, like a sliding door into my office and it has like a little handle that's metal. And those things are, they're gold. <laughs> and I was mm. like, we're never going to be done. Like every time you turn around, you're like, what about that over there? And then like, once you notice it, you can't stop seeing it. You know, like I, you could, I, I could have infinite money and I would never be done fixing this place. I want to be done fixing. Congrats on your new purchase, Paul. 
<laughs> yeah, your in your infinite purchase. Uh, well, folks, uh, technicalities aside, that does it for today. Today's show is brought to you by Smart Deploy, uh, hardware independent imaging software for fifty to fifty thousand users. Check them out, smartdeploy.com/throt, and we'll catch you right back here on Monday.